Hello and welcome to episode three of this beginner's guide to Paramix Discovery. My name is Malcolm Calvert. I'm the director of Paramix Micro Simulation, and it's a great pleasure to be able to introduce you to Paramix Discovery and hopefully help you to learn the basics so that you can get started as quickly and as easily as possible. Now, if you haven't seen episodes one or two yet, I would recommend going and watching those first as each episode that we do really builds on the last one and you can find those easily on our YouTube channel. Now, in the last episode, we began to add nodes and links into our model and we really saw the road network taking some shape. And in this episode, we're going to focus on the links specifically and how we can uh, develop those a little bit further. So we're going to look at how we add in extra lanes onto links, how we can set curved links and how we can change some other link properties. Okay, let's get started. So I've opened up the model that we were working with at the end of episode two and you can see that we've got several nodes and links in this model that are built on top of the overlay which we loaded in. So we've got really the basic structure of our model already in place. Now, as we were adding the links into the model, it was choosing a default set of link properties. And we know what it was choosing based on uh, this drop down here, which is called the link category picker. And as you can see, when I click on that, there's only one option. So by default in our model, when we create a new model, we just have one category. Now we can define categories through the edit network menu. And there's a categories dialog in there. And we can see there that we've got uh, one category of urban 30 miles per hour. And that category has got various properties on the right hand side. Now let's say we wanted to add in a different a type of link into our model, what we could do is add a new category. So I'm going to add another one in and we'll call this urban 40 miles per hour. I'm going to then set my speed limit in here to 40 instead of 30. I'll choose a color for that particular category. And when I close that, and look at the link category picker, we can see now that we've got an urban 30 mile per hour and an urban 40 mile per hour link. When I hover over the particular category, I can also see some of the other details about it in the tooltip. So with my urban 40 mile per hour link category selected, I'm going to add in some new links into this model. And I'm going to do that in uh, the the top right hand corner here in the northeast section of the model. Now what we can notice about this section is that we've got some curved links as well as straight links and so we need to take account of that. But when we're adding links in uh, we can't actually add curved links in so we add them as straight links and then change them afterwards. That's the way uh, to go about it in Paramix Discovery. So I'm going to choose uh, a toolbar button which we used in episode 2 this one which is about adding several links in at once and I'm going to begin with the existing node click on that and then I'm going to add this curved link in and I'm going to add another node where it changes from being curved to being a straight link so about there uh, I'm going to add another one where it becomes curved again so roughly there and again when it changes from a curved to a straight link so about there and I will double click to finish. Okay, now we can see that our two curved links in the model. And so we want to change those straight links to make them curved. So to do that, I'll go to my select objects button and I'll also turn on this toolbar button, which is called edit curves. Now, when I switch that on, I get little icons on, the, on each link. And when I click on that icon, it changes the link from being straight to being curved. I then simply need to click on the center of the link and drag to get that into position. And I'll do the same down here. Click on the icon and drag the link into position. So you can see that it's very uh, quick and easy 
to make a straight link, a curved link, and in this case, match the overlay. Now you might have noticed as we've been adding links into the model so far, they've all had one lane in both directions. And that's because we've had one lane uh, here in the lane dropdown. Now, if we wanted to add links with more than one lane, we would simply select this and choose the number that we want and then add those links in. But the other thing that this dropdown could be used for is to change existing links. So let's say I'll have a look at the, this link here. I'm just going to turn my Edit Curves button off. If I select the link and go to my lane dropdown, I can change the number of lanes. So I'm going to set it to two to match the overlay. And we can see that I've now got two lanes on this side of the carriageway. Now, one interesting thing to note is that when I uh, add links in, it adds both sides of the carriageway, but when I edit them, it just edits one side of the carriageway at one time. And that's because the properties of the different directions can, of course, be different. In this case, though, I want two lanes on this uh, side of the road as well. So I'm going to set that to two lanes. Now, we did that by selecting the link and changing the number of lanes one at a time. But we could also do that using multiple links. So let's say that my 40 mile per hour section actually extends along here, uh, right down to uh, this node here. Rather than uh, go through each link one by one and change them, I can actually select links holding down the control key and it highlights them all together. I could then change the properties of those in one go. Uh, so let's say I want to make them 40 miles per hour and just go to my 40 mile per hour drop down and hit change. And all the links now coming up to this node are 40 miles per hour. Now a neat way to check that is to go to my styles panel. And if I expand the links, Part and outline style and go to link category and I'm going to turn my overlay off and uh, my trajectories off as well to see it more clearly and we can see that the color yellow is used up here which is the urban 40 mile per hour link and so I can tell very quickly that I've got 40 miles per hour on all of these links. Now you might find as you're constructing the network that you need to add in new nodes on existing links. And a good example in this model is on this section here. Now if I turn the overlay on and we have a close look at the overlay, what I can see is that this part of the road is two lanes or should be two lanes, whereas down here it should be one lane. So at some point in this section, we need to transition from one lane to two lanes. And in order to make that type of transition, I need to have a node in place. So to do that, I can select my link and right click, and I've got an option there to split link. Now when I select that, a red bar appears, and I just want to position the red bar where I want my new node and then click. It's going to ask me if I want to split the link and I will. And you can see now a new node has been added in on this location. Now I can then select the upper part of this section of road, which is a new link. And in my lane drop down, choose two lanes and we can see that expanding out there. So I've got the right number of lanes, but I can see when I look closely at the overlay that I'm not quite matching up with it correctly. So I'm going to investigate that a little bit more. Now, in my uh, styles panel, when I expand the links, um, I've got this option called tarmac. And if I turn the tarmac off, I can see underneath the links just to see a little bit more detail. Now, what this is showing me is that the lane gain on the overlay 
is actually going to the right here, whereas on my link, when I turn the tarmac on, I can see the lane gain is going to the left. Now we can change that, we can amend that in the model by using a link property. If I go to the properties panel and switch that on, I'm going to select the link uh, on approach to node 18. So this is the one lane link. And I've got an option in there which is called wide end. Now if I toggle on wide end, what you'll notice is that lane one moves out to the left hand side and then the lane gain is to the right. And that much matches much more effectively what I've got on the overlay. Although my node position isn't quite correct. So what I'll do is I'm gonna move my node by clicking it and dragging it up to the exact point at which one lane becomes two. And now if I turn my tarmac back on, I can see that my model is now matching my overlay much more effectively. So that was selecting the, the preceding link and toggling on wide end. And that simply means that the link gets wider at the end when it's changing uh, number of lanes and when it's increasing its number of lanes. Okay, so there's one final thing we're going to do in this episode. And to do that, we're just going to move further up uh, the model to this section here and I'll maybe minimize the properties and the styles panels so we can see it more clearly. Now this section of the network um, has a combination of one lane and two lanes and so I just want to tidy some of this up. Now I can see when I look here that some of my node positions aren't great so I'm going to move uh, my nodes and I'm just clicking these and dragging them to move them into better positions. And I've got some two lane sections. So if I click on these links and I'm holding down the control key to do this, I can then go to my lane drop down and change all those to two lanes. So that's a much better match with the overlay. Now there's one final thing to do and that's where we've got what we call a lane drop. So that's when we're going from two lanes to one. So it's kind of like the opposite of the lane gain that we've just looked at. Now, as with a lane gain, when we've got a lane drop, the lane drop can either go to the right or it can go to the left. And by default in a left-hand drive model, it's going to the right, as we can see here. But if I turn off my tarmac, I can see in the overlay that the lane drop is actually to the left. So I need to make a change here. And that can be achieved by selecting this link. So again, it's the link with a fewer number of lanes and toggling on what's known as a wide start. So it's beside wide end in the properties. When I toggle on wide start, it makes this section of the link wider. It moves the lane to the outside and we can see now that the lane drop is going to the left. And that's a much better match with the overlay underneath. So that brings us to the end of episode three in this beginner's guide series. And we've covered an awful lot in this episode. We've looked at how to create new link categories and then use those new categories for adding more links into our model. We've looked at how to take straight links and make them curved, at how to add extra lanes onto our links, and also how to split existing links in the model. And then finally, we looked at adding wide ends and wide starts to be able to accurately represent lane gains and lane drops in our model. So I hope you found this useful. I encourage you to go away and try these techniques on your model and look forward to seeing you for episode four next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.